Older successful women tend to overlook that money and accomplishments do not give them points when men choose to select them for the long term or just a casual fling. And unfortunately, they try to highlight success as the main reason men should select them rather than all the other traits that men actually want in a woman. Now, I don't know if it's the womanist ideology, delusion or trying to overcompensate for what they lack, which would be youth, beauty and fertility. But throughout the history of mankind, no man has ever gotten his salami hard over a woman's money. Am I wrong? And at the end of the day, even with her accomplishments and success, most men won't benefit from any of her money because his money is her money and her money is her money. I'm not trying to downplay women who actually made something of themselves. Most men can't do what some of these women are out here doing. But when it comes to relationships, men simply don't care about a woman's success and money, but you can't tell them that. So I don't give a rat's ass what happens to them because they won't settle for less than what they deserve in their world. When you stop and think about it, womanism has dragged many women into loneliness and dissatisfaction just because they wanted to prove something to men. But that's their business. They chose this path, so whatever happens to them, it is what it is. There are consequences to everything in this world. So today, we will be doing part 2 of yesterday's video about successful older women having problems in relationships now that men are checking out. We will continue the article by ThePowerMoves.com on why successful women fail at dating, which is a really good and well-researched article. So tap the like button, and let's dive into it. High-quality men are undersupplied. As women have been improving their conditions, men lag behind. And in some areas, there are just too few men in general. Number 1. More women in urban areas. The gender split in cities varies widely, but a Columbia University paper shows women outnumber men in big cities, and the authors propose that they're looking for men. And when looking at statistics, we should take into account that Skittles men show up as male but are not looking for female mates, and there are twice as many Skittles men as Skittles women. Number 2. Whole world regions have more women than men. Some regions of the world also see women outnumbering men. One little discussed reason is that transformers, such as men who feel like women and thus are not available partners, skew the statistics. In countries like Thailand and the Philippines, the gender ratio penalizes women significantly, and that's why many Europeans enjoy Thailand. All right, gents, like the United States and some other parts of the world, women really do outnumber men in these countries. So already, they have an uphill battle to get their personal man. Then when you add on economics and whether these men measure up to the ridiculous standards women place on men, is it a surprise that they can't get a man? Think about it, guys. It goes back to what I said in part one of this video. It is simple supply and demand, and these older women are competing with young, attractive women in their prime that are ready to do whatever it takes to get a man of means, so it's a wrap for most of these women. This is why they constantly complain because using their strategy does not give them the desired results, which goes for most older women. But always remember guys, they chose this life, so let them live out the consequences. As it relates to overseas women in poorer countries, the main reason why they are taking the men of the women in the first world countries is just that they treat men better out of necessity or the culture. Most men get treated like garbage in their own country, so if you blame them for going where they'll get better treatment. But you see, women don't care about what men want, so they prefer to complain, bish and moan rather than trying to fix their behavior and treat men better. So F them in my opinion, let them die alone. If they want to treat men as less than, then let them stay by themselves and you go where you are wanted. Anyways, let's continue. There are far more low-quality men. Finally, men are overrepresented in society's almost undateable lowest rung. Men use drugs at almost double the rate of women and are more likely to commit self-deletion, end up in prison, socially shut down to the world, overdose and die, become alcoholic. In some regions of the former USSR, Alcoholism has contributed to making those countries terrible markets for women to meet men. Writes evolutionary psychology researcher David Buss. This trend is exacerbated by women's high standards for a mate. Their choosiness dramatically shrinks the effective pool of eligible men. This leaves just a few survivors, men of reasonable social status, with adequate self-confidence and good resource potential, who are willing to commit, over whom women then compete. So, gents, we already know that women in America and other first world countries are super picky and have ridiculous dating standards just because the good economic times afford them that luxury. But they can't see that if all of them are aiming for the top 10% of men, they will eventually run out of men or these men will never commit to one woman, especially not an older woman. But when they can't get what they want, instead of realizing they are aiming too high and instead they should lower their standards, you'll hear them start saying, I can do bad all by myself. And ladies, 
I agree with you 100% go and do bad all by yourself to the funeral home, because that is what is awaiting many of these older successful women who are still holding out hope that they will get a top tier man. Look, some of them will get the man they really want, and they will be the rare exception. But for the vast majority of them, well, I only see cats, wine and a cold and lonely mansion in their future. So men, never feel bad when women reject you or play you for a fool, thinking they can do better. Just sit back with your popcorn and wait for the circus to begin. Let's continue. For many men, looks trump success. Men are into hot women. We know that. But here's the interesting bit. We made the point that men prefer women who are less accomplished than they are. And yet, most couples still often match each other in terms of overall value. How come? It's because what the two genders seek and exchange in the sexual marketplace is not exactly the same. That means that transactions, that is, marriages, can happen with wild imbalances of specific traits. Take attractiveness, for example. An ugly man can marry an attractive woman because he makes up with resources. On average, men value most youth and attractiveness, which is genes, while women value most attractiveness, social status, and resources. That's a very high-level generalization, of course, but it's been confirmed by research over and over again. Since attractiveness is not highly correlated with life achievements, it's often relatively easy for older but successful men to end up with unaccomplished but attractive women. And in case you're wondering, trade-offs are consistent with evolutionary psychology theories and well-documented in the literature. All right, gents, and that is why I tell you guys to chase the money and not women. Money gives you leverage and options that make things that seem impossible possible. Because if you have money, you can get to sleep with a woman that's an absolute beauty, that if you were a broke dusty, that would never happen in your wildest dreams. So again, I caution you to prioritize money over women if you want to get the best quality women possible. And when you get the money, you won't even need to approach or date women anymore. You could literally buy them for a night and move on with life. And as a bonus, younger women are less expensive than older women and you get the best out of them. So in my opinion, why wouldn't you want to date a younger woman? Older women may be more experienced in bed in life, but that doesn't mean they are pleasant human beings to have bedroom fun with or have around you constantly. I often notice that the older a woman becomes, the more she is likely to nag and ruin the mood, so keep that in mind. I don't know about you, but I would prefer to be average and have peace. Then have access to a woman's money, but she is quarrelsome and nagging. I'm not signing up for that ish. Anyways, let's get it. For many men, youth trumps experience. This is a contentious one, but we don't let contention stop us on our way to the truth. The average age difference between heterosexual couples tends to be above five years in developing countries and around two to three years in developed countries. But here's the catch. Most men still prefer younger women in OK Cupid study. Many older men don't date younger women because they can't, not because they don't want to. Exceptions apply, of course. And that wouldn't be a problem for average women. But since we are talking about successful women who want successful men, well, the rules change drastically for successful men. They change because many successful men can date younger women. And many of them do. The wealthiest 400 men in the US married women who were, on average, 7 years younger. But when they were married, they chose mates who were, on average, 22 years younger. Again, gents, younger is the better deal. Just put it into perspective as you age, your preference for women typically will not go along with your age. So you will want a young tail feather to look at. You are also biologically hardwired to want younger and firmer women. That's the bottom line and you can't tell me otherwise. I really don't see what men get from older women, to be honest, and I'm not dissing them. I just don't see the value in dating older women. You are literally paying top dollars for a depreciating asset. Make it make sense. No matter where you go on planet Earth, most men will always value younger women over older women in terms of mate selection every day of the week without question. So what that tells me is, deep down, men want younger women and want to have bedroom fun with younger women. The legal age in your country, of course. Let's continue. We could also theorize that there is a strong relation between resources, genes, and personal character. The most successful men also showed a lot of grit, determination, and intelligence in amassing their fortunes, and that makes them attractive fathers no matter their age. Note, there are exceptions. Some older successful men do prefer women closer to their age. Evolutionary psychologist Jeffrey Miller says that life experience and maturity make for emotionally more fulfilling relationships and some men appreciate that. But usually, you're better off working with the rule rather than seeking the exception. Gents, imagine grinding to the bones and sacrificing sleep night after night to become a man of means, just to choose an old hag who believes she is better than you because she has a seized up vice grip that feels like sandpaper. It couldn't be me, brothers, no way in hell. 
I'm not grinding to have someone with gremlin feet and varicose veins. Hell no. Guys, you do you. I just know that I'm not doing it. Let's continue. Career women are not feminine. And men prefer feminine women. This one will not go down well with some female readers. But again, it's either rejection of reality and fantasy or reality. And both common sense and studies prove that men prefer feminine women. The downfall of femininity is two-pronged, cultural and professional. The defeminization of career women is not wholly women's fault. In large part, most industries and businesses reward traits that are more associated with masculinity than femininity. Of course, correlation is not causation, and many career women might be more masculine to begin with. But still, it's most likely a mixture, and I wouldn't discount the nurture side of it. Jen said you ever sat down and listened to a career woman talk about her career and how successful she is. That has to be one of the most boring and unpleasant experiences ever. And it's like it's part of their identity. They can go on for hours telling you about their useless job titles, boring and monotonous work, and how proud they are to be a slave to their employer. But many of them would never serve you a warm cup of tea, although you just paid for the dinner date. This is one of the many reasons I don't like older women in terms of dating. All they do is brag and talk about their success and accomplishments, which I don't care about. Younger women, on the other hand, the ones that aren't talking about their mental illness, usually have their legs on my shoulders and my salami in their mouths without having to wait too long. So which would you prefer? Let's continue. Successful women date poorly. Many successful women date poorly for a variety of reasons. Mistakenly believe their success makes them great catches, and then get bitter when some men don't recognize them for the great catches they believe they are. Some career women adopted combative womanist social roles. Social roles are okay, unless they come with baggage, and self-identifying oneself with womanism often comes with a very unattractive dose of bitterness and, in the worst cases, man-hating. Yes, extreme womanism is the female version of toxic masculinity. Gents, I think this is women in general and not just successful women. When in recent times do you see or hear modern women dating intentionally and searching for the men that are good for them? I'll wait. They overwhelming go for the men who have no desire to be with them long-term and friend zone the good men. So this is why I always say don't save them in their decline. Let them face the consequence of their poor decision making. If they prioritize the CC all throughout their late teens to early 30s, then let them die alone. It's simple guys. I don't know why so many of you can't walk away from the women who made bad decisions their entire lives. I'm not saying you can't beat up that wet vice grip, but why knock up and commit to these women when every man before you showed up didn't see her worthy of committing? Gents, stop accepting less than just because you want to bust a nut. Let's continue. Career women don't date assertively enough. Most women don't date assertively enough, and career women are not the exception. Strong in the false belief that their accomplishments make them great catches lead successful women to date too passively. Mark Guinan even says that game theory factually predicts that successful women lose out in dating because, feeling like they have a strong hand, they don't bid aggressively enough. Then the least successful ladies come in, and they're ready and available and fun, and they pair up with the successful men. They believed in the lie that men and women are the same. That lie comes with many harmful consequences for career women's dating options. They include the belief that her resources would give her dating leverage, that femininity was a thing of the past, and that open female ambition came at no cost, and as we've seen, they're all wrong. Gents, in my opinion, this stems from these women believing they are better than the man they are talking to. A lot of these women believe that just talking to you is doing you a favor, so of course, they're not going to be aggressive in locking down that man. But the younger women who are broke will see the value and want to take that man off the dating market before somebody else snatches him up. It's just a shift in mindset that makes these women their own worst enemy. But again, do not feel sorry for them. They chose this path, so they must walk it alone or with their cats and dogs. Most successful older women would get a man overnight if they could humble themselves and prioritize the man over their career. But they refuse to do that because the job is more important than the man, which is why more and more of them will die alone. So gents, get your jars ready to collect old woman's tears and enjoy the decline. Shout out to the guys who donated to the channel. We got Ray, who donated to our PayPal, and he said, Thank you for taking the time to make these videos and helping men learn about female nature and how to protect ourselves. I appreciate you, man. Thank you, brother. We appreciate your donation and I wish you all the best. Stay safe and don't commit to these desperate women out here in these streets. And we got another donation on the cash apps from Vashon and he said, burn womanism, burn. Thanks for the donation, brother, and make sure you take care of yourself and focus on the grind. Don't go falling back to the plantation and wanting love. Hold the line, brother. Appreciate you. 
To support the channel, you can donate to our PayPal and Cash App in the description box below, and you can also like and share the video with a man that needs to hear this message. That's the best way to support us. If you want to submit your personal stories that will be featured on the channel regarding your past relationships, advice with women or how you manage to become successful, email your story to thejinsagez at gmail.com. The email will also be in the description box below. And remember, gents, older does not equate to better.